The Beef and Barnsey Show, brought to you by BowlersMart.com, trusted by bowlers around the world since 2004. By Lightning Strikes Bowl, home of Bowlers Mart Pro Shop. By Platinum Ford, drive the difference. By Fire Lake Bowling Center, 24 state-of-the-art lanes. By True Grit Coatings, drive on our passion. By Row to Grip, king of them all. By 900 Global, striking worldwide. Good morning and welcome back to the Beef and Barnsey Show. Uh, as usual, I am one of your hosts, Barnsey, but joined by the unimitable Stuart Williams. Uh, good to see you again, Stu. What uh, what do we got for the board today? We have uh, the jolliest bunch of bowlers this side of the nut house, is what Tina went with. So, All right. Um, Fair enough. Thanks for that. Um, did the USBC press release go out yet? Uh, yes, it did. Okay, so uh, PBA streaming is now on Bowl TV. So, um, in the interest of everything being in one place, this is a good improvement. Now, there's just one fee to watch everybody, right? Uh, the ladies, the college, uh, PBA. Um, so Good deal. Uh, Tina says, please tell me you understand the reference. <sighs> I'm sorry to disappoint my wife yet again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so anyway, well, we always bring you um, talented bowlers. Um, well, we've brought you somebody. <laughs> it's Christmas vacation. Okay. Yes. Okay. I figured that's probably what it was. Um, so we brought you uh, talented bowlers. Today we've brought you a different talent from the industry. Um, the, uh, the, the brains behind the Darren Tang YouTube channel. Um, Jesse is a um, two-handed bowler um, who fouls a lot. He, um, he stars in Darren's uh, league night with his editor um now he's given up his spot uh to focus on uh making the videos as good as possible because it seems like more people want to watch darren bowl league than bowl pba stops so uh without further ado let's welcome in uh jesse makes films how's it going what's going on um kyle says i'm not wrong i hope he's talking Listen, about you fouling yeah i haven't fouled in a while my it's friend, while, while. The, my friend who I brought to watch you bowl the other day, uh, uh, John, he was so disappointed when you didn't foul. He goes, "I went all that way to watch Jesse bowl. He didn't foul." <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, we fixed it. We worked on it. So I, stood, I took everybody's advice. So tell us a little bit about uh, your relationship with Darren, how it started. Um, you know, what yeah. a guy who's as talented as you are with video editing is doing in the bowling world. <laughs> yeah um so i started doing video editing when i was i think a junior or senior in, in high school i was maybe like 16 years old um and i was doing it for actually youtube but it was call of duty it was like uh, video games that i was making montages of and so that's where i got my feet wet in the editing world um after that i went to college for nothing related dropped out of college didn't know what i was going to do with life and uh Happened to pick up a camera from a friend or whatever, um, kind of fell in love with it. And then in 2019, I went full-time freelance. Uh, I quit all my restaurant jobs and stuff, and I just went full-time. Uh, I was given a good opportunity. Uh, $40,000 salary. It was 22 years old, college dropout. So it wasn't too bad at the time. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> making social media videos or whatever. Um, in Vegas, uh, bowling is actually a pretty common thing. Uh, amongst my age group um, to just go midnight bowling because South Point has bowling on or at the time had bowling all night long. You get $1 games after midnight. You can just literally be there till 8 a.m., barely spend any money, just have a great time with your friends and drinking and stuff. Um, so me and my friends would go bowling kind of every now and then. Uh, never had my own gear or anything, though. But uh, right before COVID, um, I got more interested in bowling. Uh, got my first bowling ball. And then COVID hit, shut everything down. And I was like, well, that sucks. I just started liking this sport. Um, 
But that was around the same time that Darren started streaming uh, different bowling stuff. And so I was just getting into the mix of watching bowling on TV. And I saw Darren's show against uh, where he was the number one seed. And that's how I became a fan of his initially. And so I started following him on Twitch, saw that he was doing ball giveaways and whatnot, would hop in his stream and try and get into these uh, marble races to try and win a free bowling ball. Um, and then uh, COVID opened all the bowling balls or didn't, they didn't open the the bowling alleys up, but the bowling alleys opened up despite there still being COVID in the world. Um, started bowling again, uh, watching the house bowling channel when they were doing all their uh, reviews of mm -hmm. people sending in their, uh, their forms and stuff, <clears throat> Packy and uh, BJ and Darren, whoever else would, uh, or Chris Vi too, would always review people's uh, uh, forms, you know, in, in their physical game. And I started watching that a lot and it helped me, you know, become a, a lot better bowler than I was when I was just learning on my own. Well, and I'm so glad I actually, helped somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I actually sent in my own video where I put my own spin on it. I sent in, like, I just made it cool. You know, like I had my whole progress tracked. I had all these videos from my phone from like three months ago, you know, till the present, not right now present, but at the time present. And I just showed the evolution and I attributed it all to the house bowling reviews and like sent it in and they loved it. Um, Chris Vi gave me some tips. And um, after that, I was sitting in Darren's stream one day and he's like, chat, I need an editor. I want to start uploading on YouTube, this and that. And I was there and I just started typing. I was like, hey, uh, I actually live in Vegas. Um, I just sent in that video to the house bowling. People seem to like it. Uh, I do this for a living. Um, you know, let's chat. And then after a stream that day, uh, we had like a three hour phone call and then we pretty much just got started. Uh, people like Kyle Barr, he was in the stream at the time when that happened. So he's been there since the very, very, he's, very he's, beginning. He's one of your day ones. He's the day one, dude. He, 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 uh, he vouched for me, uh, when I said, yeah, I sent in that video to the house and he was like, yeah, dude, that video is sick. Yeah. So. We'll never forget that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, that's a cool, that, that, that's, a, that, that's a cool uh, backstory of how you and Darren got started. Um, yeah. So, yeah, just a fan first. <laughs> yeah. I mean, talk, talk a little bit about the evolution of what you've done with the channel. Yeah. Um, what, what you think some of the mistakes people make are, what's the, uh, you know, what, what what's a good way of getting started and uh, sure. any advice you have for people? Yeah, um, our position is a bit different um, than the typical because Darren was willing to invest right into his bowling channel. He was willing to invest into somebody, um, whether be whether he invested because um, he saw the value or he invested because he was too lazy to do it himself or a little bit of both, which is probably a little bit of both. Um, he was still willing, you know, to spend the money on somebody to. Um, to work on his channel. And so our initial deal, um, I, I don't think it matters if I say it was a thousand bucks for two ball videos and two stream highlight videos. And that's what we started with for the first couple of months. Um, and which was way under what I was charging at the time, but I saw the value in what he was able to give, right? He was already a public figure. And I said, okay, I think we can leverage this to, um, to just make something, you know, really cool. We can make something really cool that people want to see. And so our position with it was um, since I was a camera guy and I already had all cool equipment and good stuff, you know, let's just press into that. Let's make the production value as high as possible. That's what's really going to separate us from everybody else that's already doing mm -hmm. bowling videos. Um, so initially, I don't know if some of these people can go back on the channel. Our first few videos, oh my gosh, it was pretty bad, to be quite honest. It was really bad. Our first like probably 50 videos were awful. Um, it just took a lot of time to get into the stride of what we were really doing. Um, <clears throat> initially we just had shots going down the lane. It was literally just a shot compilation. No talking about the balls or anything. Like it was just the worst, I don't know, the worst thing ever to do and didn't really get any traction, but, um, we did some stream highlights too, where we, um, I ripped his stream off from the internet and then I just cut it up and him talking about the PBA league at the time. And one of those caught. It was him talking about not throwing urethane anymore, 
one of those caught the algorithm and then that's what got us our first boost in subscribers got us uh just looking at chris's face that darren actually <laughs> spoke about not throwing urethane and, yeah i mean <laughs> bullshit i heavily clickbaited it um and it was called I, i'm not throwing urethane anymore and people and I, we had less than two thousand subscribers and that video got like twenty five thousand views yeah. and um so i was like that was the one and then yeah that got us the watch hours we needed <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I like we, we're uh, we're a little bit in that spot now with starting this like short channel. Yeah, and it's kind of funny, like remembering all those times when me and Chris were sharing it, because of course we we have a lot of followers on Facebook, like right. relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was like getting to the thousand subscribers was like mm -hmm. hilarious because we'd like every every three days we'd like retweet, hey, to hit the subscribe button, and it's like. Because we do the show, we got to the watch hours pretty quickly, but getting to a thousand subscribers was like yeah. those those days are kind of fun. So yeah. yeah, luckily I think Darren had maybe like I want to say like one point two thousand. Like he had some videos uploaded already before uh, before I mm -hmm. started working with him. So he already had his thousand subscribers. We just needed to get the watch hours in, and so yeah, that one stream highlight did it for us, and then. Once we saw those first few cents, you know, roll in from monetization, we just started going ham. And um, since then, it's been it's been good. Um, yeah, evolution wise, gosh, um, yeah, production value was always kind of there, but in terms of how the videos looked, right? I still use the same cameras or you know, mm -hmm. same realm, same family of cameras, um, and so that has always been something that we attributed to our channel and that's what's always uh, separated us um i am awake barely <laughs> to answer your question yeah when uh, whenever we have darren on for this time slot darren just doesn't go to bed the night before yeah that's funny i mean you've got problems if 8 a.m is so early that you think it's better not to go to bed yeah uh my kids wake up at <laughs> it's eight o'clock anyway so this is not anything too bad for me um but yeah so yeah, production value was there, camera camera value was there. It looked cool, but over time, yeah, we just got into the flow a lot better. You know, I started really studying and realizing uh, what people wanted to watch, um, how they wanted to receive information and what val information was valuable for them to receive and pressing into that, not really throwing the fluff in there. You know, our viewers don't really care about RG and diff and all these like technical things, you know, there's a lot of other channels if they want the technical information. And there's also just stormballing.com. Um, we press more into the entertainment side while still yeah. giving you the core of the education that's needed in order to pick the ball. So which, uh, which videos do you have the most fun with? <clears throat> like, which is the, um, the, the, the most fun for you to do? Like when you're editing them down, which, which do you enjoy working on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those vlogs that we did recently um, with the at, at the at the Vegas tournaments are are definitely the most fun to put together. I'd say you should um, you should check this latest one out, especially at the end. Yeah, one of <laughs> the wildest things I've ever seen. That was crazy. I've got the I've got a better angle of it too, but I just didn't want to put it on there because I was I didn't want to get demonetized. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> but. Um, yeah, the videos that I have um, that I'm able to film myself, just a bunch of bowling, and then take it into the editing room and just be as creative as possible with it, um, and then seeing the response. That's probably the most fun part. Is like you know pouring a whole lot of hours into a video, and then seeing it pay off. Now, when it doesn't pay off, that's not very fun. <laughs> when it doesn't oh. get very many views, um, not as fun. But um, the ones that we've done recently, everything's just been popping off. You know, people are enjoying the channel a lot so there's nothing as soul destroying is there as uh logging into youtube studio and seeing 10 out of 10 yeah it's pretty bad <laughs> lately our 10 out of 10s re in retrospect aren't haven't been too bad so yeah it's okay. but yeah it's still it, it it it's the worst thing on youtube that they have that feature like when you see that yeah because it ranks like your last 10 videos like at this at, after this many minutes this is how many views you had so no, nobody wants to see 10 out of 10. No matter how well the channel is, <laughs> nobody wants to see 10 out of 10. Yeah. Um, Andrew said, uh, sorry, Adam says, how many hours to edit down one of the League Night videos? Yeah, um, League Night vids are about 
I'd say close to two hours of footage, about an hour 45. Um, I think, yeah, four games, 25 minutes each. Yeah, I think he's more saying, how long do you work on the edit? Like yeah, um, to cut that down to 20, 15 to 20-ish minutes um, probably takes fully edited, yeah, uh, like maybe four to five, sometimes six hours, I'd say. Yeah. Um, I split it into separate blocks. I like do one where I cut all the fluff out and all the boring stuff and just get all the good footage. And then I put the music and all the fun, fancy stuff. So each block takes about two to three hours itself. Okay. Yeah. And then when you're using like um, music or uh, sound effects or whatever, do you mm -hmm. use like a site for that? Or, you know, yeah. like, so where do you get your... Yeah, there's a there's a website called Soundstripe, and there's a website called Musicbed. Both are paid subscriptions. Uh -huh. um, Musicbed, I just got recently because it is fairly expensive. Sorry, um, but those are where I'm getting the uh, the good you know hip hop, rap, rock music you know for the vlogs, yeah. and then all the regular basic you know more basic instrumentals I'm getting from uh, Soundstripe. Okay. Yeah, um, I think people like you know the, the 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 sound effects and stuff more more so than the music. I think sometimes the music is kind of like people don't necessarily notice it, which is sometimes a good thing. Yeah, you know, it's like in the background and you're just going along with it. But you know, so, some of the fun. Um... Well, there you go. Thanks, Chris. Ray. I, Chris, I think you're muted. I, or I no, know if... he needs to go out. I think. Oh, okay. Uh, StreamYard is a pain in the ass, and at times when you have more than two, it like causes issues. Um, but it might be that he hit the mute button on the microphone as well. That might be a possibility. Oh yeah, maybe happens. Um. Anyway, so um, let's talk a little bit about your bowling. Okay. Because you know we're on the bowling channel. Right. Can we hear you, Chris? No. Is that flashing? Okay, push that button. Can we hear you now? All right, there we go. There we go. Jesse was right. I, I should I should have give you less credit. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, let's let's have a little talk about um, about your uh, about your bowling, and then okay. we can get back to uh, YouTube tips. So, <clears throat> I actually went down the other night. And uh, you were, you 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 had a pretty solid. What was it? Eight ninety. Yeah. Yeah, and you were bowling on sixty three and sixty four, which for people who understand isn't necessarily always the best <laughs> point south point. So that's quite the uh, journey that you've taken, um, because I mean, to be fair, you were terrible. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and you had an attack of the fouls, and uh, so what's what what's changed it is it just like you've been around darren and he's just like you know his aura of good bowler has come off Let's on you see. or have you actually been you know spending some time on the lanes and really working on it um no i think i'd be a lot better if i actually practiced well um, i think most people would including yeah. some pba players right <laughs> So, <laughs> no, I don't practice. I honestly feel like my physical game has gotten worse than what it was in season two. Uh, fresh off the jazz now lesson. Right. Um, that, you know, that was probably peak Jesse bowling uh, physical game wise. But then now I'm just kind of chucking the ball and hoping it strikes, uh, which kind of sucks in my opinion to watch, to watch back. I, uh, I I feel like watching though, I think that you might feel that way, but I think your hand's in a way better spot now. So Dude, my hand was all the way on the side of the ball. I feel like I yeah, feel like but, a but, handed version of Luis. Yeah. Yeah, but you get on the side of it, but you but you bowl on the house shot, so that's fine. Yeah, okay. But sure. you don't but you don't go in the wrong direction from there. Like before you used to come really over the top of it, and now you don't really do that. You're just on the side of it. Okay. Which I don't think it's like terrible and certainly certainly not on uh on, on the looks of some of the shots you threw the other night. Right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, a little bit like Dimitri Cruz, right? 
Yeah, a, li a little it's, bit. It's, it's different from that, it's, but it's definitely not as polished as Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my uh, I don't know, my physical game is just awful compared. We're to all in progress. Well, yeah. Um, when you come to I... Texas, start editing our videos. We'll get that fixed. We'll get that worked out for you. Yeah. <laughs> Darren and uh, I have been have been on a journey with uh, my bowling stuff. There was like a period of time that he was helping me a lot, and then we I don't know we just got busy, kind of fell out of it. Um, I was also uh, am I allowed to cuss? Yeah, you do whatever you want. I was an absolute dickhead and uh, did not um, receive his information well, and so he just kind of stopped coaching. That's me, just one more I thing we share with yeah. regard to Darren. <laughs> So the thing is, is like, is um, you swearing has already endeared you to our viewers probably more because, you know, um, Darren was, when he's been on, has been a little worried about his brand. Uh, he's, he's been a little bland. Um, I don't have much of a brandy just yet. Yeah, yeah. But you start, but you, you said you're actually going to put some work into your own YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, starting next season. Uh <coughs> <coughs> sorry next league season i guess it starts in january a little bit before the pba tour um me and lance are going to be bowling doubles for those that already know us um it's going to be me and lance bowling doubles instead of darren and lance or me and darren he's going to be on right. tour and then dance lance and i are just going to be crushing it and i'll just be uploading that on my own channel so i actually <coughs> wonder um and maybe it doesn't really work out logically. Mm -hmm. But did you ever see? Do you ever see any of the good, good content? The golfers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that editor? He has his own channel. Yeah. I think that some of the things that he does, he does are quite interesting. I think that like a lot of it. I think you would get a lot of interest from that. Like his perspective of what he has to do to get that video prepared and stuff like that. I think. I, I, I think. You might see a lot of interest in that because I think people are fascinated by what goes into it. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think he's more than a one man team. Um, I think they oh, do have 100%. Yeah. 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 Um, so, up until fairly recently, I've been just a one man team. Um, not really had the time, especially with kids and uh, a family and everything, you know, a lot of responsibilities. Yeah. Uh, to, to, pour into something that isn't giving me any sort of return yet mm -hmm. um, but we are expanding we are scaling channels doing well we're hiring um or have hired a couple of guys and um so i should have some more free time and more resources available for me to yeah for, to grow as a whole yeah I'd, like like i say I, I think that i think that you might see some interest in that just yeah <laughs> lessons per subscribers <laughs> so why does what? Darren hate league so much um, because it creates bad habits that's just I, I can't speak for him but my from my perspective what I'm just relaying things that I think he said it doesn't benefit him in any way to bowl on the tour and if he's just hyper-focused on bowling on the tour, doesn't want to tweak his game to bowl league, then uh, that would be the reason why. Um, I, I'm not going to – I know you guys yeah. want some kind of uh, – uh, No, some, not like, really. We we were just fascinated by your perspective. Yeah, I think – I don't know. <laughs> I feel like you guys want some, like, drama answer, like, because he sucks at bowling league, but – well, well, that's no, what he says, but he's he's one of the best bowlers in the world. So obviously, he does not suck at it. He he doesn't excel as much as other people excel when the lanes get that easy, yeah. which is common for a lot of guys that are at the top I, of tour. We I think we're more a case of like I feel like he alienates some people by referring to it as like like this is dumb. Is is more a case of I see. like yeah. um okay. Uh, no. When he actually tries, the reason why he he always does challenges and like tries to make it fairly interesting because mm -hmm. he just gets bored, and um, and it actually makes it worse for him when he's trying and then it doesn't give him what he wants, and then he hates it even more in that case. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think we've all been there, like yeah. where it's kind of annoying when the league guy um, 
you know, beats the crap out of you. Yeah. But at the same time, sometimes it's fun to actually lean into that. So then at least if he makes it challenging for himself, either he doesn't bowl good and he can attribute that to the challenge or he does bowl good and he's like, this is amazing because I'm challenging myself and I'm bowling better than I ever have before. So it's yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, it's the, it's, it's the, um, you uh, take failure out of the scenario. Right, exactly. Um, one person asked, uh, do you edit on Premiere? Yeah, Premiere Pro and After Effects are the two that I use. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Brian. Love you, bro. Uh, Jesse, what is your average and what's your favorite ball? Well, um, my average for South Point <laughs> um, bowling league at that doubles league on the double burn or whatever is 213. I've established at 213 for 12 games, the best I've ever bowled. Um, every time I bowled in the videos has been 800 plus. It's been pretty great. Um, favorite ball, uh, I've been throwing the high road pearl lately and I, I like how it rolls. So yeah, that, that, one, that, that one hooks a lot down the lane. Yeah. Sure. But um, my average at a, sorry, Orleans much lower, very bad. Yeah, less, even, less friction at the Orleans. And it's on the fresh. So yeah, <laughs> much, much smoother, straighter balls at the Orleans than at, yeah. the, than at South Point. Yeah, for sure. Is, yeah. And then bowling on fresh that that's like the worst comp. That's the biggest difference you could possibly get. If you bowled South Point fresh and Orleans burn, it would be yeah. much closer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, really Jordan different. says he loves the edits. The last few you've, I really enjoyed watching. So there you appreciate go. that, John. Yeah. We're trying to, Oh, so insider tip for you guys and for all the viewers to anticipate, I will be flying to all the majors this year. Okay. So I will be filming all the majors. Darren is going to have a cameraman at every stop as well. One of his close family friends um, that we're bringing on the team. So the video should be more consistent, a lot better, but all the majors should be fairly similar or if not better. To so you taught with. Darren's mom how to run a camera? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I think you'd be quite yeah, pretty. Yeah. If, if, if one of the times she had Tracy cam, that would be pretty funny. Mama Tang. The yeah. Mama Tang cam. <laughs> no, she often films, actually. No, no, but I, I don't mean that. I mean, like, literally a camera just fixed on her. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, yeah. every reaction to every shot. Like, if Darren made a show, you, you should set your own camera up the other side, just literally filming every reaction. You have her wear a backpack and then mount a GoPro and just all <laughs> She's, She's great. great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then Mama just tell Tang. Darren... Just tell Darren, yeah, you have to tell her. It's for the content, Mom. Yeah, I love her. Yeah, she's so funny. I love her. Um, but yeah, all the majors will be great. It'll so be great if you're uh, just just a heads up, if you're going to be a uh, cameraman uh, for a YouTube channel, um, I think you have to be in the way constantly while wearing Crocs. Um, that's where, um, what's his name? I forget the kid's name who does Brad and Kyle's. Uh, oh, <laughs> he, Always wears the world's worst Crocs, and he's <laughs> always in the way. Always. No That's... matter where he stood, he's in the way. It's amazing. So <laughs> uh, the bar has been set. That's Dennis. That's the kid's name. Oh, yeah, Dennis, yeah. It, it's funny because uh, when Jared comes out, Poland, uh -huh. he always like is like trying his best with Dennis. Like He, he loves <laughs> giving him a hard time, but he's really yeah. trying to help him. And it, it's so funny because Dennis is just like looking at him like, what? <laughs> Somebody asked which lens you use or which which are the favorite lenses that you use. Yeah, I've got a few uh, lenses. Um, the main one I think that everybody is curious about, it's a 70 to 200. Um, it is a $3,300 lens. It's very tight down lane, so it sees very well. Okay, probably for lack of better words. That's technically what I would call it too, though. Just means something different, but zooms in very far down the lane so you can really see the ball hook gives a better view than the super wide view that every vlog has, you know, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. something different. That's the main one. And then I've got a 70 to 200, uh, or sorry, 24 to 70, which is a little bit wider. Um, just, you know, a nice for somebody to talk to, to the camera, a little bit closer, but those are the two main lenses that I use. Okay. All right. says, I'll ask because I am that guy. How many dollars does a YouTube channel like D tanks bring in a month? Yeah, absolutely cannot disclose that information. Okay. Fair <laughs> but I, uh, 
I have my own house. <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> oh, you've been watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's Chris's favorite. Um, we're not the house; we have our own house. Yeah. Has the PBA and and, and also in comparison, your, your mom didn't buy it. No, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Sunset Station. Um, yeah. Has the PBA contacted you about doing content, and would you do it if they did? Um. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, about a year ago, we were in small talks with um, Tom Clark about doing some different videos. He had some idea, um, some sort of vlogs or whatever, and kind of, but it just never went through. I don't think they liked the price that I gave. Um, and so would I do it? It would be hard to pull me away from Darren's channel, given how fruitful it is now. Um, a year ago, yeah, I was absolutely willing to do it and uh, doing the best that I can to balance them both. But as of right now, yeah, it would have to be a pretty hefty, hefty paycheck because our ceiling is pretty infinite um, as of these days. I, I mean, I think this answer, you're, you're speaking for itself, but uh, yeah. is, this is your full-time gig? Yeah. Yeah, it's been full-time for almost four years now. Nice. Uh, even before bowling, before YouTube, I was doing it for different things. But yes, very much full time. I'm very humbled by it. Uh, so much so, did you edit the fate video for Belmo? Uh, yeah, all the fate videos um, <laughs> that, that came out, all the promos, I did edit uh, for Storm you, uh, around, or I'll film and edit for Storm. It was during the. Uh, what was it the ball showcase thing? I was what was that yeah, called? Ball Expo. Oh yeah, ball. ball. Expo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. That's got to be pretty cool that people recognize your work. Yeah, that was the number one comment on the video on Storm's bowling channel about Belbo's new brand new ball. The number one comment was Jesse edited this video. <laughs> pretty amazing. <laughs> pretty amazing. <laughs> So if that's not uh, some confidence to make my own channel, I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Uh, somebody asked if Stu and I are bowling the Roth Holman doubles in Delaware. We are, but not together. Uh, I'll be bowling with my son. Uh, and Stu is going to bowl with... Uh, Frank, yeah, I imagine. Okay. All right, Sue. It actually just came out. I don't. I don't know that people have actually got their partners back together again. But uh, no, what, what were we supposed to enter? What, sorry. What were we supposed to enter? No, I don't think we can yet. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> so they're, they're talking to you here, Jesse. When will <clears throat> the first video drop for your channel? Yeah. Um, good question. Let me look at my calendar. I don't know. <laughs> Um, the video is filmed already. It's it's a behind the scenes of League Night. So it's actually a really good video. Yeah, yeah, kind of what we were talking about. Yeah, a lot of people would love to see um, the lenses that I use, all the gear that I use, everything that goes into it. Because when fans actually come and watch, uh, the most uh, common comment that I get is, I didn't realize how much gear actually goes into this. All kinds of mics and different stuff going on and lights and stuff. Um, so yeah, I've got the video filmed. Man, it's just a matter of, of pulling the trigger. I don't know, just different things. I'm battling sickness right now. If you can't tell, all the all the all the coughing and stuff. But before the end of the year, I will commit to that. Before before the year ends, uh, the first video will drop on my channel, hundred percent. Nice. Yeah. And what's the upside? Uh, so not talking about just D Tank's channel, but what what is a range of. Uh... Maybe what, how you might budget it out of what what you could could bring in um, on my own channel. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I haven't uploaded anything yet, and I've got nearly two thousand subscribers, so that's pretty great. Um, I think once we start uploading um, the tech industry, I think I would. Well, I don't know. It's kind of tough because I'm, it's going to be weird because I'm uploading bowling with me and Lance. That's more for the sake of building the audience. Yeah. And then, um, it'll pro after that, it'll probably just transition into 
how I create the best bowling videos on the internet, you know? Um, I've just been put into this box of bowling videographer. Look at this guy. He makes bowling <laughs> videos. This is the guy. Um, and so, I mean, it's just a matter of me, you know, using that to, to sure. my benefit and everybody else's benefit. Um, so I don't know. I think the upside is infinite, to be quite honest. Um, as long as I use the resources well, um, I didn't really know how to answer the question. I'm so sorry. I'm just kind of uh, going off. I guess, but, uh, I guess, I guess what he's really talking yeah. about is, is like, <clears throat> is like, is make, is, is, is bringing in $5,000 a month, a realistic goal for oh. you from that. That's kind sure. of like, yeah. I, I think that's more what he's saying. Like it isn't necessarily like what, whatever, because for every, but every different person, a lot of money's relative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, is it, is it 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000? You yeah. know, I don't think most people have any idea what's capable. If you keep your clothes on, what you can make on the... Oh, you so know. you're saying, what's the goal, basically? Is what yeah. Well, yeah. What, okay. what would you think? What Basically, I think what he's asking is, what would you think would be reasonable for it to be worthwhile for you to continue doing it? Um, On my own channel? Right, yeah. on my own channel. Yeah. yeah. Um, Honestly, I, I'm... I think building or helping Darren build his channel has proved to me that um, this genuinely, the ceiling is infinite. Like my mind is absolutely blown and I'm sure Darren's is too with um, how much growth we've seen just in the last six months alone. Um, I don't think, I think once I get started, I'm not going to want to quit. Uh, it was the same thing uh, with Darren's channel. Once we saw the, saw the first few cents, you know, roll in, and uh, all these people watching and commenting and the response that we were getting, it's like dopamine, you know what I mean, to creators. Um, and so for me, I think once I see that on my own channel, I'm not going to want to stop. So the goal is just to continue and be consistent realistically. Um, but if we're talking actual dollar amounts, I, again, I just I really do think it's uh, I think it's infinite. You know, I don't I don't I don't know if there's an end goal. You know, YouTube's not really an end thing. It's definitely a long game. Um mm -hmm. Uh, <coughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Well, let's hope he doesn't, right? Let's hope he doesn't. Let's hope. I hope Darren makes more money from the tour than he does from YouTube in 2023 <laughs> because is it, it would be kind of hard to beat. We'll just say that. And if he does, then that means he's doing great and he can get his own house. <laughs> but, uh, okay. It's pretty, yeah. Uh, no, it, it would be, it'd be great. Um, if if he did super well on the tour and just great for everybody involved, um, and yeah, I mean, if I was if I had my own channel and I was doing the same thing, then everybody's happy, family's happy. I'll get an even bigger house, and my family can live a great great uh, life. <laughs> what is the most important? Views, subscribers, comments. Um, comments are actually really great because it gives us more insight into what the people want to see and we can tap into that and apply it to the next video. So feedback is always the most important thing for anybody to get better at anything. Um, subscribers is great for numbers, you know, just, just in milestones, you know, to hit goals, uh, setting goals. Um, but the views are actually what get us paid. So there's benefits to all of it. Neither, none of them are most important. Um, they're all equally as important. Um, very much beneficial just to see it does it depends on how you look at it okay yeah. um the thought process of how you edit on premiere pro uh would be interesting to see as a behind the scenes type deal so there you go yeah uh probably will be implementing that into the first video as well um or making a separate video on it either yeah it's either going to be a part of the first video of behind the scenes of league night or a separate video of how i edit you know league night one or two. I think uh, I think one of the fun videos you did it was like when you it was very early on. I think you mm -hmm. put it up on your Instagram. It was like you you showed like the the the, the timeline. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, of like I think Darren was drilling a ball or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like and I remember me and Packy were looking at that and we're just like laughing because you know we might have like I don't know like four lines on our edit or whatever, and Packy's like, look at this. If he's just like <laughs> looking at his like 76 different things on there, Packy's uh, just like, oh my God. 
That's funny. I never knew what people's response to that was, to be quite honest. Um, well, I think was, most people don't understand what that is. Yeah. Like, but the people who do do an edit on a video are just like, like that. They're like, yeah. oh. <coughs> um, that was that was a really cool video. That was one of the first ones we did. It was in the first few months of me and Darren. It was for the proton physics. I wish we had done it for a better ball or a more, you know what I mean? A more, not that the ball sucks, but like a, a more fruitful ball, I guess, more popular, like a Belmo ball or something. Um, that was like one of the first videos that I really put some big creativity into. Um, again, just kind of, it was more of a video for me, not um, not not for the anybody else. So, but it was cool. Everybody liked it. So it says, Darren did not come off as that likable. That has changed considerably. Uh, <laughs> has he grown or is your editing help? Yeah, I think likable is relative. Yeah, of um, course. Yeah. yeah. But um, I'm trying to think of what I he's think, saying. I think likable Probably. is the wrong word. I think he was just quite um, uh, quiet, so to speak. Like okay. he wasn't really – I feel like now I think the league thing has mm -hmm. brought out more of his personality. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. I think that when he was doing just, like, the ball videos or whatever, he's kind of a little bit, like, stiff maybe because <laughs> it's very difficult because you're trying not to say the wrong thing a lot of the time. Whereas mm -hmm. when you bowl in league, it's very hard to – it's very hard to keep a, a certain personality that isn't really your own Yeah, for three hours a league. Yeah, I will say at the very beginning, I was actually pretty, I was always very impressed by how well Darren um, acted on camera, or not acted, but just how comfortable he was on camera. He always looked at the camera. He didn't look at me holding the camera. That's a big thing for mm -hmm. on-screen talent. That's a huge thing. So he always looked at the camera. Um, he always talked um, fairly well, but ever, but ever since then and even until now, Darren just kind of talks with periods in between every single word that he says. Um, and so I do have to, I have to cut out all of that dead space a lot. You'll um, be shocked to know Stu does not talk like that. Yeah, he definitely doesn't. No, but no. I say um a lot. So that's not helpful. Yeah, um, if, have if you, you seen uh, real quick though? Have you, have you seen that, um that, that edits program, I guess it's Descript it's called where you can edit the words out. Oh, um, I've seen things like that. Different, it's like AI, like different bots. Or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. It, it, it's kind, it's it's kind of. I, I imagine for like, if I wanted to edit this down, mm -hmm. it would be very, it would be way easier because you could just read it and be like, okay, delete that whole section out. Yeah, and it's way faster to read it than it is to have to listen to the whole thing. Um, yeah, yeah. With Darren, the problem is I have to cut out dead space all this dead space of yeah him it, not talking in the middle of a sentence it, it can it. um it, it has a thing with the ai where it's like edit oh, gaps. Cool. oh and then cool. it's like and it can also edit fill words so it can take out every time you say you know what i mean yeah oh and, and like I, um and like all that. of that and then also the other thing that's really cool is if you put up enough footage it can mm -hmm. um it can do a voiceover for you so you can literally just type in and then your voice speaks. That's scary. That's cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Super cool. So this is a nice compliment here because you and D-Tang are changing how people view bowling. What changes do you think the PBA should or could make to make it uh, more relative to a younger crowd? Hire young people. Hire younger people, younger creatives. If you're trying to um, expose the, the sport to – the up and comers, right? There's a decent amount of college bowling and stuff and high school bowling, mm -hmm. sure. But if we want it to grow, right, it's the, it's the young people that are that are for the future at the end of the day. And so to appeal to the young people, you have to hire young people as well. Um, if it's only, I've seen the staff. <laughs> I've seen the staff at all this flow bowling and, you know, whatever. Um, it's just very, it's been the same for X amount of time. You know what I mean? And the internet is always changing and people's interests are always changing. And we live in a industry and a, and a time that people are just doing this on their phones the entire time. That's my kids, by the way. Um, <laughs> they're just doing this on their phone and they're just getting this constant hit of dopamine on TikTok and shorts and everything. You know what I mean? And so you have to be able to capture in that one second that they're going to be watching your video. And young people know how to do that. And it's not TV anymore. 
it's not uh it's not you know broadcast anymore you know it's uh it's quick everything's quick attention span is slowly depleting <laughs> <That's pretty bad. laughs> quickly depleting <laughs> yeah quickly depleting it might say. not have been that long to begin with but uh what do you think about the bowling the drone footage uh the guy did through the bowling side oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah i saw that that was cool that was really cool um <clears throat> You need a special type of drone to do that, and you need a special type of pilot to be able to I was fly. Say, you need some <laughs> skill to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, luckily, I have a guy. His name is Bryce. Super dope drone um, drone pilot out here, and he filmed something similar. Not not the same caliber where he flew around the whole thing and did all this choreography with the people, but uh, you guys may or may not have seen it on Darren's uh, Instagram. He Darren went up. He so he's flying the drone. Darren goes, throws a shot, he posts, and he flies the drone in between his legs, uh, in between his trail leg and his and his, uh, and his front leg. Um, yeah, underneath, down the lane, follows the ball, strikes. It's really cool. It was super dope. Um, it's on Darren's Instagram. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's one of the coolest things we've, we've filmed. I didn't film I know, it. I know we're getting at your time uh, where you need to get out of here, I think. But, uh, yeah. nine o'clock. Nine o'clock is my cutoff time. Okay, then, fifteen yeah. minutes. So. Yeah. Uh, they want to know what what Darren's uh, viewer age tags. You know. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the the bulk of it is between. Let's see. What are the things? It's eighteen twenty five and the twenty six to thirty four, thirty five yeah. to fifty or something like that. Something like um, that. It's the it's those two. It's eighteen to thirty four ish. Um, that's the bulk of our audience. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is kind of what you'd expect. I don't want to know if you donate your time to Pro Bowl. And, 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 I I'm really going to say you the answer because it's awkward to say that you're worth much more than that and you should get paid for what you do. Yeah. And generally speaking, people who donate it completely either aren't very good at it. Yeah. Or, I don't... <laughs> or you get what you pay for. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know if he means... If I if I would donate time as in practice and then eventually become a pro bowler, is that not what he means? That's no, how he I, means that's how I take that for okay. Yeah. Um you know, I'm not opposed. I, I give back to the industries that give to me, you know what I mean? And so if I'm taken care of in other ways, I'm absolutely available to take care of people also. Um Yeah. 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 Um, do you, do you have uh, anything else? Any, what, what, what's your uh, top five tips? Let's just, let's end it with that. What's your uh, like top five tips for people who want to get going and what, what, top what are the things tips. to avoid? Okay. Um, let's see. Number one, um, you, which you could probably hear from everybody. I'm going to write this down so I don't repeat things is to definitely just get content out there. Um, even me as a professional videographer for years before I started working with Darren, um, our first 50, like I said earlier, our first 50 videos was awful. And so uh, I, I need to take my own advice and get my own content out on my own channel now. But uh, it's absolutely just to get content out there. Um, if you don't have content out there, then nobody can find you. Nobody can give you feedback. Um, you'll never know what people really want to see from you unless people are telling you. So read the comments. That could be tip number two. Read comments and listen to your audience. Um, people comment literally to tell you if you're doing something good or you're doing something bad. So you have to be able to take that as, um, as critical feedback. If you're trying to become a creator, a public figure, um, a person of influence, um, you know, you got to use all that and, you know, not particularly take it personal, um, but especially starting out read the comments and um, use that as, as good, you know, critical feedback. Um, number three is probably learn how to edit um, dot, 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 good <laughs> in caps. Um, <laughs> spending time in editing will, so you can always out edit bad footage, but good footage edited bad will always look bad. It, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So like, it's like, it's like having bad sound. Exactly. If yeah. you have bad sound, you're screwed. Pretty much. <clears throat> That'd probably be number four. 
um, sound. But um, to touch on number three, yeah, editing is very important. Um, it's the best when you don't notice the edit, right? Exactly what you were saying earlier. When you don't notice the music or you don't put, you know what I mean? If everything just flows together, it's a better experience for the viewer. And the editor is the last person that sees the video before the audience does. Um, so you got to learn how to edit so that people don't, um, they're not looking at the video and saying, oh my God, this edit is so bad. You know, you can have the best camera in the world, but if it's edited together poorly, everybody's going to notice and you're just going to have less viewers, you know, because of that. This is, this kind of is an interesting one. It says, do you think you can make quality bowling content with an iPhone? Yeah, absolutely. Luis does. Mm -hmm. Luis Napolis does. He's got almost 20,000 subscribers, if not 20,000 already. I'm yeah, not he's sure. got almost 25,000 now. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, good for him. And and he does everything with his phone. Um, so the case study right there. Um, yeah. I, I honestly think, like, looking back on it, I think that for me, for me personally, with the thing, with everything, I think the most important thing we bought was the mic. Yeah, I think that having the mic and being able to like Chris's videos, like a lot of people like that Chris can talk through his thought process while he's bowling. Yeah, and you can't do that with the phone unless right. you have a mic. So right. finding something in that regard, I think, is way more important than the camera. Yeah, my number four would definitely be um, uh, lean into sound um, or care. Care more about sound than you do about <laughs> the actual video, 100%. Um, like I said, you can always out edit bad footage, but you cannot uh, edit or out edit bad sound. I mean, you yeah. can if you hire a guy that's super pro at it, but it's just so much a headache. Yeah, um, fixing sound is just having, really hard. Yeah, having a good mic will, oh my gosh, it'll take you so far. Um, that's all, and that's truly just all you need. As yeah, Stu can attest to, I've messed up many a video by uh, not getting the sound correct. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, us too. I mean, it sucks when you get all the way to a shoot, you set all the lights up and everything and cameras and everything, and then mic dead. Um, pretty awful. Um, it's almost the end of the world, it feels like, for a video guy. <laughs> but, it's even worse if you don't have anybody monitoring it, and then the video gets sent to you, and you're nowhere near the guy who filmed it, and then you realize that his mic's blown out. That's yeah. worse. <laughs> that one once or twice. <laughs> yeah, you got to make sure your ducks are in a line for that. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's kind of like all of those things are way easier when you have more people. Like if you yeah. have one guy filming, it's much easier to get track and keep track. Of that. <coughs> Sorry. All right, and then uh, number five. What, what I was about to bring up thumbnails. Um, thumbnails. If we're talking, <coughs> sorry. If we're talking YouTube specifically, then yeah, um, thumbnails are pretty big. Um, honestly, I'm going to be quite honest. We just kind of rip off, not rip off, but we take inspiration from the biggest creators on the platform, uh, such as Mr. Beast, Air Rack, um, you know, all of the above, you know, Sidemen, you know, whoever. I mean, it would be stupid not to. It's like, right. it's, exactly. it's the same in every sport. It's like, why do you think so many people bowl two handed? Cause yeah. Belmo and Oscar were really good at it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same thing. So um, look, <coughs> this is a term that I've coined a long time ago. And to be quite honest, it was just bullshit. It's real. It's a real theory. But I, the term that I created for it is bullshit. I just created it. I just made it up. But I call it the three C's, collect, copy, and create. So you go first and you uh, collect information from the people that have done it first, right? It's like a baby only learns how to talk from their parents, right? You know, they follow, they copy their language. Um, so you go on the platform, you collect all this information from the people that are doing it the best. You learn from them, and then you copy them. Um, you learn the techniques. Um, you try your best to replicate the techniques that everybody's using, whether it be thumbnails, editing, um, music style, whatever it is, you know, um, you know, camera angles. Just do your best to copy like literally replicate it because then by process, you're going to learn how to um, undo everything they did basically backwards. And then once you learn the behind the scenes of how those things are created, because you basically broke it down in order to replicate it, then you could take all of that information that you learned and create your, create your own style. 
put um, your own piece on it. Yeah, based on your own, yeah. all those techniques that you copy from everybody else. So, yeah, inspired borrowing for sure. <laughs> for sure. Inspired con- borrowing. I like it. Um, it depends. I don't particularly like being contacted, but if you absolutely have to, then it would be through Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to be a dickhead. I'm so sorry. Um, no. Hey, oh, no, no. Stu's on here every time. We're yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if he has an off day, I, I feel in on that. Yeah. On that side. So no, uh, Instagram or discord. <laughs> if you're trying to like, you can all, everybody can message me about um, learning something. If you have uh, genuine questions and you're trying to learn something, I'll absolutely respond. If you're trying to hire me, chances are uh you don't have the money too so just don't waste your time is basically what i'm saying charlie tap new gig bowling influences for dickheads like uh you know the you know the uh the books um oh uh, yeah some different dummies, dummies. Yeah. yeah dummies this this is this is going to be your timeline uh, your, your your tagline for it bowling influencer for dickheads I love bowling it. videos for dickheads <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, to be quite honest, there might be a point that um, uh, I do or under some sort of production company that Darren is a part of um, that we do take on uh, clients, you know, and just kind of give them the resources that we have, kind of coach them through, you know, mentor them through this beginning of YouTube and then kind of send them on their way. Um, there's a chance, you know, it, it's it's in the in the works. It's possible, very much possible in the next couple of years. Um, I, I get recommendations on my YouTube channel or on my YouTube homepage of young, uh, creators all the time, like young bowling, like guys that are trying to bowl league or whatever it is, you know, and it's pretty cool to see that we have an impact on those guys. Cause they're exactly what I said earlier. They're copying our thumbnails, um, same style of music and whatever. So it's cool to see that, uh. Or taking so you recommend like some older guys, and you know maybe that's a that's a good route to take is get one of these young guys on and uh, grow together. Yeah, I've never seen. Uh, I haven't been recommended any older guys <laughs> on YouTube, <laughs> and I think that's just because I don't click on them uh, if if they are on my recommended page. But you know, some yeah, we do like, videos. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you knew this, Jesse, but uh, oh, we, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, subscribe to you guys, of course. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of podcasts, so I always listen to podcasts. So <laughs> this is the value that I take from this channel. Podcast. Hey, I don't know if you guys knew this. I don't think you do because I didn't tell you. So how would you know? Um, this is the first podcast I've ever been on, so you okay. guys have all the all the honor on that. Yeah. So. <laughs> all right. Well, I've I've got to go, and it seems like you've pretty much got to go because it's it's. Uh, 10 yeah, seven here. Yeah. So um, somebody asked me about Luis. Um, yeah, Luis is a good guy. We bought, I actually have a video with him on his channel going up today. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's an interesting one. We're doing a 12 strike challenge. He didn't tell me that before I got there. So um, we, oh, we use the six balls we brought. One of mine was the platinum Ford plastic ball. And one of them was the Zen U. He came with six reactive balls. So. <laughs> just, oh, just, just understand he cleans out the gutter at least once. <laughs> All right, Jesse, anybody else you'd like to thank or uh, or uh, closing thoughts? Yeah. Um, uh, I, uh, Based on the things that I've heard Stu say about me and Darren, and he always gives me all the credit and doesn't give Darren any, I still have to give Darren credit for giving me the opportunity, right? At the end of the day, sure, we can all say, yeah, he reaps the benefit because it's his face all over the channel. But at the end of the day, he still did give me an opportunity. He trusted my work. He doesn't get in my way at all. Um, You know, I think, you know, when it comes down to it, we do have a great partnership that he sticks in his lane and I stick in my lane. And uh, we don't, you know, you know, try to overtop people. You know, he's not like a boss. You know, it's more of a partnership. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, shout out to Darren for all of that. You know, giving me the opportunity. I appreciate him for sticking with me as long as he has. Because to be quite honest, personalities have not got along super well in the past. But, you know, he's given me chances and vice versa. 
and uh, we stuck through it. And yeah, we appreciate each other now and we're in a good spot. So you guys are going to see us for a long time. Um, yeah, it's a good, it's a good thing going and I hope to stick around for quite a while in this industry. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing some of your wisdom today. Um, congratulations to both you and Darren. Um, hopefully you guys have a lot of sponsors. I am jealous. We have zero. It, it might be the, uh, what you consider a worthwhile deal and what we consider a worthwhile deal are con different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, in your intro, I just heard this guy talking about all these different sponsors. That was like, Casey Kasem. And I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, that's a lot of, that's a lot of sponsors. So we have none. All right. <laughs> We do okay. It's it's we, it's a lot of we, fun. So yeah. we, we we say the same about a hundred thousand subscribers. That's a lot of subscribers. <laughs> yeah. Fact. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> all right. Let's say thanks, it, Jesse. You know. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, yeah, I learned, I learned quite a bit today, and uh, uh, hopefully Stu did too because he does all of our editing. So uh, I will see you guys at the at the majors this yeah. year. All right. Take care. Looking forward to it. All right. See you. Bye. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, appreciate you sticking in watching today, a little different, uh, Avenue for us. And, uh, but, uh, really cool. Uh, like I said, as, a as not a, uh, young guy, there was a lot of things in there I didn't know before today started and, uh, uh, the amount of time it takes to make, uh, videos and the way that Darren, Darren's channel does them is, uh, you know, it's labor intensive and it takes a lot of expertise. And, uh, so a very cool thing. But uh, Stu's got to get out of here, too, so we're going to wrap it up. We'll come back Tuesday. We are at Fire Lake this weekend for the players. Uh <laughs> I think that's because Jesse didn't know who he was. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, he wouldn't. Um, All right. But, but, yeah, we'll be at Fire Lake. We'll try and get some footage this weekend. There's some match play involved. Hopefully we're bullying in some of that. And uh, – until then, please support the sponsor, support us. Storm, Roto Grip, 900 Global, Coolwick, Bowler Smart, Fire Lake Bowling Center, Lightning Strikes, and Platinum Four. Till next time, stay safe, stay healthy. God bless. See you later. <laughs>